because I banged the table aggressively somewhat. Aggressive. Don't and break it, but score. we know you're stronger than Nick. So. <laughs> <laughs> Live from New York, it's the show that's only an hour today and has Coach Mangini in for Nick. It's first things first today. Brew, are you surprised Brady went with Josh? Uh, well, first of all, I think it's clear, at least to me, he went with Josh because he likes Josh. Are they buddies? I mean, he even said, I like him as a guy. Like, a lot of this was, that's my guy. I'm hoping he does it. And I will say this, Coach, if they're that close, and Josh doesn't always listen to Tom, right? That We've seen that on, on their interviews. He should be, Josh should be picking his brain about 12 personnel, right? That was huge for New England with Gronkowski and Aaron Hernandez. And they got two talented tight ends in Buffalo. Obviously, your receiving core is in flux, at least right now. They should be running that a lot, and I think you should be picking Brady's brain on that. But I am, from a football perspective, Coach, I'm very surprised because obviously the offseason that the Bills have had, I think this is at least to date. We'll see what they do in the draft and, and other moves. But to date, this is, I think, the worst team they've gone into the season with in the last three or four years. All right, you, you lost your two best receivers. You lost five of your eight captains defensively you lost some you know critical pieces I think they'll be good defensively because McDermott is good on that side of the ball and last year despite a lot of injuries they were good defensively but still I mean saying that unless you are saying Mahomes is going to win it this year and then next year maybe Josh can come back these are I would put these quarterbacks ahead of Allen as far as winning their first Super Bowl for him right now Lamar Burrow C.J. Stroud, just, I mean, I'm not saying he's going to win it this year, but right now I'd put him ahead of uh, Allen because of the team. And then in the, on the NFC side, just because of the team is great, Purdy. Correct. Uh, Jordan Love, Jared Goff, oh, wow. and, may, and, and maybe Jalen Hurts. I'm just saying Tough ahead one. of Josh Allen Tough right one. now because of the team. So, Tough one for Dak. Yeah. Tough list for Dak. Yeah, Tough Dak, list. Dak, Dak. I got another list Dak will be on, but not this one. But, yeah, Coach, I, so football, from a football sense, I'm very surprised. It, it's funny you said Tom, whether or not Tom likes uh, Josh, because that's the first thing I looked up. Does Tom Brady golf with Josh? Yes. And, and he does. And, <laughs> and, and they're buddies, go. and that's exactly what this felt like. It's like, okay, I'm going to go with my buddy. And when you look at it, you know, Josh has to get over the 18 interceptions. That's a problem. They get rid of Diggs, and, and whenever you get rid of a player and you're going to pay him $3 million more on the cap than you would if you had him, obviously that's a problem. So now the chemistry gets better in the building, but you can't replace that talent right. that, that he brought on Sunday. Then he loses four out of the, his five receivers. So from a, from a force multiplier perspective, this is the big test for him, whether or not he can elevate the offense, losing his best weapon, losing all that continuity, and, and it's, it's a big if. And, and from a salary cap perspective, this is a cleanup year. They're 29th in, sal- in salary cap. This is not the year that you would predict them to go win the Yikes. Super Bowl. Now, that being said, they're in a division that's going to give them a chance to get to the playoffs right. because there's so much flux. They've won it, what, four years in a row. Last year they won five games in a row, won the division, won a playoff game. So there is some resilience in the organization. And Stephon Diggs wasn't that big a part of that end-of-the-season run for him. But this did definitely feel like, hey, I'm going to throw my buddy a, a <laughs> nod here. Um, let me show you a graphic of, uh, because obviously Brady was talking first-person perspective. So the idea that Mahomes is the new Brady in terms of mm. dominating. Uh, Brady is 12-2 and two in the playoffs. Mahomes 5-3. and three. three Super Bowl appearances for Brady. Four for Patrick Mahomes. His rival, Peyton, was 2-4. for four, Didn't go to the Super Bowl until year 9. Josh Allen, 5-5. Five and five. So do you think Coach Mahomes, and Brady kind of alluded to it, is the biggest obstacle in his way, or is it some other thing that's preventing Josh from getting over the hump? Yeah, Mahomes is the biggest obstacle in the whole NFL's way right. of, of winning a Super Bowl. And, and you know, that's, that's an issue that everybody's got to figure out and overcome, and teams are going to they're gonna structure their team to be able to beat them, especially if you're in the AFC. But the Bills, the Bills have had a lot of problems in the last – few years and especially last year there was there was always some kind of there was something yep. brewing underneath that that they had to deal with uh and and they put they made that push financially to get over the hump and they didn't and now you've got to pay those bills yep. and it's going to be a little bit of time I think before they're really competing at the highest level and, and I think you know I'm big on intangibles at quarterback and Josh has to show 
that he has those. We know there was there were issues with his best receiver. So that is that somewhat on Josh? I put it more on Diggs, but still a little bit. Some of it's on the quarterback, right? You got to be able to control that and work it out a little bit. So yeah, on, I, yeah, on a little on Josh. I don't, think it, I don't think it's just Josh. I think that it's the head coach, too, in the, admi- the administration. Okay, when you make fair. that decision, to, but to I just cut mean even being able money. to control, like, again, well, I, well, a little bit. You would, bit you would like your quarterback to be able to handle difficult guys in a locker room, especially if they're as talented as Stefan right. Diggs is, and figure out a way to make them work so that you can at least get them to Sunday. Okay. Uh, let's head to Dallas, where one NFL executive told Jordan Reed that they didn't totally get how Dallas is building their roster this offseason. I don't really understand the plan there so far this offseason, but there's a lot weighing on this draft, and they seem to be confident about finding a bunch of starters. Now, they have had some success in the draft before, obviously, with uh, CeeDee Lamb and Michael Parsons, but, Brew, can you put a grade on the Cowboys offseason? Well, first of all, I'm glad this executive watches the show because <laughs> I've been saying this, yeah. all right? So, grade, you know, I look through everything. I'm thorough. With my grades, let's see, coach. First of all, they tell us they're all in. We're ten toes down. And they knew we thought that meant all in for a Super Bowl. It may have meant all in to just tear this thing down eventually. We were tired of paying all this money and no results as far as Super Bowl wins. Maybe that's what they meant. But after that, they lose several key starters. Two of your best offensive linemen. All right, your defensive coordinator, one of your best defensive pass wrestlers in Dorrance Armstrong, your best running back in Tony Pollard. All right, so that's an issue. Then you, you, uh, your wide receiver, C.D. Lamb, is talking about holding out. Now there are leaks. These are leaks that you, you don't like your best player. All right, Michael Parsons, and now you're not going to pay Dak. Then there's another leak. Oh, we might just look for another quarterback. All right, so I just think, Coach, the way they're handling this this entire offseason, you got worse on paper on the roster. Whatever chemistry you had, whatever good vibes you had, at least for now, those are in question. Mm -hmm. And you're a worse team than you were when the season ended. So I'm fair. He's fair. So when I get get my grade, (laughs) it's it's falling, which is appropriate because it's an F. What else can I give them, Wiles? I mean, a D minus. No, they they have they have fallen way behind the Eagles. All right, does way it, behind the Eagles got Saquon Barkley. I know you think that funk, Coach. I, I think the Eagles' funk was just. Super I natural. don't know what the heck was going on. Big Fangio is going to solve all. You think? He, he's gonna Kellen help. Moore, Big Fangio. Uh, look, I I am not as harsh a grader as you are, <laughs> but there's not there's not much I can I can disagree with you on. Okay. And, and when you look at it, it it's the, court, the head coach is going to the final year of his contract, yeah. so he's going to play it out. So there's uncertainty there. All the changes that you're going to have defensively, because whenever you bring in a new defensive coordinator, philosophically you're going to change. As much as you may want to stay, you may want to stay the same, you can't. Your two best players now are, are, not, are, are disenfranchised a little bit. They, they're, they're, they're unsatisfied, so you've got that component of it. You've already got all the, the negative energy from the embarrassing loss to Green Bay. You've got the expectations that you built with your fan base where you tell them you're going all in. Yep. You lose so many key players. I, I don't know as a head coach how you sit. What do you say when you stand up in front of the team in terms of, hey, this is why we're going to be better this year than we were last year? Now, you can get an influx of, uh, of talent from the draft. You hope you can. But you can miss just as easily in the right. draft mm-hmm. as, 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 as you can hit. So what do you say if you're standing up in front of those guys in terms of this is why we're going to win the division and this is why we're going to win the Super Bowl? It's, it's a hard sell at, at any point. And they've only got three draft picks in the top 150 or really 170. Well, they got right. 174. Okay, it's three in the top 174. Four in the top 175. <laughs> That's not hey, a lot, Coach. Kevin wants to give him that D minus. Right. No, <laughs> you're I'm trying, to, put I'm trying right. to be fair. And Zimmer, the defensive coordinator, one-year deal. I mean, think about that. One-year deal. So I think all-in meant this is it. You guys have this year, and if not, we may be cleaning house completely. And, and, and I like Mike Zimmer a lot, and I think he's going to do a good job. But from a from a personality standpoint, 
he's very, very different than what they were dealing with with, with Dan. So those players are going to have to get used to that too. Mike has a little bit more of an edge than, mm. than Dan did. Not that Dan wasn't disciplined, but Mike has an edge. Um, random prediction time. You didn't prep for this. At what point, what week in the season will we say, what do you think about Bill Belichick to Dallas? If things are going swimmingly, I don't think we ever talk about it. Yeah, I, it's hard for me to imagine that things are going to go swimmingly <laughs> or early on. And knowing the way that people treat the Cowboys, we could be talking about it week four, I'll week take the three. Wow. What do you think? So you sound they're in danger of missing the playoffs. Yeah, I, I think that the NFC's gotten better. I think it's a combination bit. of when you when you lose talent like that, and then you combine that with transition, then you've got uncertainty yet head coach quarterback and your two best players both offensively and defensively that's that's a lot of gunpowder that's that can go off in that locker room at any point okay uh let's talk yeah, about I, i'm week four or five week six. four okay cam newton sat down with shannon and shared some advice for the reigning mvp one thing that lamar and the ravens organization have to figure out is how to win the ugly games Stop thinking. You know, as a chef, you can prepare this meal in so many different ways, but everyone knows your signature. You've got to find a way to win the ugly games. Now, we're trying to interpret that, what the ugly games are. Uh, here's where the Ravens rank this year. Overall, pretty strong. They got to the playoffs and didn't run the ball enough. But, Coach, what's your take on the ugly games uh, aspect and Cam's advice? Well, I'm going to say something that I don't think I've said very often. As I totally agree with Cam Newton. Hmm. Wow. I, I absolutely agree with what he's saying. And I think Cam brings really unique insight for, for Lamar because there are similarities between the way the two players played. And, and what he's saying is, and, and I, I find this a lot from, from Baltimore, you know, they make the move at offensive coordinator. They didn't want Greg Roman, and his offense tended to be a run first, build play action off of that. So now they're going to go make a change, and now it's going to, we're going to focus on, on how well of a passer Lamar is. And, and Lamar has done some good things throwing the ball, but that's not necessarily his greatest strength. And he can continue to improve that, but he has a very unique way of playing that's hard to deal with that, that very, other, very few other quarterbacks can, can ever present those challenges. But there's this, it seems like this need from either Baltimore's perspective or from Lamar's perspective – to, to change the narrative and, and to say that he can, he can be this or he is this elite pocket passer. And I don't think that's what you should focus on. Just figure out whatever you have to do to win that game. And if it means you run the ball 40 times and if it means that he's running quarterback driven runs to get over the hump, mm -hmm. then, then do that. Mm -hmm. it, it just there, there's been so many times where it feels like they're trying to prove a point instead of trying to 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 do what, what really is what they do best. Well, I think that certainly was a problem against Kansas City. I mean, we may be having a whole different conversation if they just run the ball. What I disagree – look, I think Baltimore's culture is about winning ugly. Like, they're That's always good defensively. They, they've generally been a run team. Mm -hmm. They won their Super Bowls with Joe Flacco. I know he was hot that postseason. Trent Dilfer, the other Super – like – to me, they win ugly. Like Lamar this year was six and zero. He he was six and zero when he didn't throw for two hundred yards, and in none of those games did he even run four hundred. So, but, like, but do you ever hear him talking and embracing that? Do you ever hear him saying like, "Hey, this is what we do. This is our brand. This is our. We're gonna own it. We're gonna embrace." No, it's hey, we got to move on from Greg Roman because he definitely it's too wanted much to this. go in a different direction hey, this year. Yeah, we got to throw the ball more. We got to get better receivers in. We've got to build up the pet. It's always about about proving people wrong in terms of, of of the narrative related to Lamar. And Lamar is great at what he does, and and he's getting better in a lot of areas. But just embrace the things that you do really well. And give opponents a lot of it because they can't handle it. I would think this year they're going to – like, they had to learn, Coach, from that, that AFC title game because it was just blatantly obvious to everybody that they went away from the run too much. And I think they got to find that sweet spot because I like Lamar, you know, throwing it the way he did this year. But when he needs to run, he's got he's to gotta lean into that. But, but how sick are you that you had to learn that lesson no, in, that, I, in that scenario? And, and – you can hope that you're going to get back to that game, but there's no guarantee. And remember, oh, no, Lamar's come off a couple of seasons where he finished the season injured. 
So this is a, a season where he's healthy, they have that opportunity, and now we're going to prove a point, and, and all it did is, is end up sending you home. Um, Brew, speaking of the playoff game, do, do you think Lamar needs to reach the Super Bowl to silence all doubters? He needs to win it, not just win reach it. it. Win it. Oh, okay. He's won two MVPs. Everybody, there's 10 other guys that have won NBA MVPs, all quarterbacks except for Jim Brown. But every one of those 10 guys has won at least one Super Bowl. So that's the class you put yourself in. And so he has to not just reach a Super Bowl, win it. Like, if he doesn't win a Super Bowl, he's going to finish his career. Yeah, he'll be a Hall of Famer because of the MVPs and the winning. But we will look at it with disappointment. But he never got that one mm -hmm. ring. That'll de help define his career just like it does kind of Dan Marino's. Now, in fairness, even if he didn't have two MVPs, Coach, I think he'd still be – you got to win the Super Bowl because he's yeah. that good. And Wilds, you know, I'm, I'm, I made the S Bob famous of course. for teams, <laughs> for of franchises. Course. Here's the S Bob quarterbacks, coach. All right, look, there's, there's two different categories S Bob quarterback, Super Bowl or bust because of their individual greatness. This Mahomes, is just this year. Well, this is going forward. Okay. For, going forward. For, okay. Yeah, it, I guess this year. Mahomes, you know, obviously he's about winning Super Bowls. Lamar's got to win one. Allen's got to win one. Burrow's got to win one. The bottom next under that, these guys are approaching that. If they have the seasons this year that they had last year, or Herbert typically has, then they will become S Bob quarterbacks. Where okay. it's like, okay, Jordan Love's so good now, he's got to win the Super Bowl. That's what we're going to judge you by. And the same for Stroud and Herbert. The other three on the bottom are because of their team's greatness. Right. Not that they're not very good. Purdy, obviously, I like. But with, he's in an S. Bob situation. Yep. Like, no, they've been to the Super Bowl even with Jimmy Garoppolo. So, Purdy's got to win the Super Bowl. Dak, because he's with America's team, has to win the Super Bowl. And Hurts is kind of floating in between because maybe he is that great. Maybe Purdy, too. But Hurts has to win one because that team is built to win now. They got a lot of pieces. You know I always love your stuff. I don't know if I love this. You don't love this? Well. He's not I, an S Bob guy. Putting, I, you, putting <laughs> CJ Stroud there. After well, there, one there year, are question marks. Put, There's question marks. Putting Jordan Love there after one year. I struggle with that. And then your boy Brock Purdy. After but all he's the not in a, a Super Bowl or bust situation. No, no, I, I agree. But all the stats that you quote uh, yeah. over and over again, he doesn't even make the second row. Well, no, the second Nick would be so happy <laughs> with this with this graphic and this chart right now. I can't I can't believe I Purdy's there and Stroud and Love are up on that well, one. It's more strength of the team. Okay. And again, the question marks. Are Do I want? Them? Don't even ignore the question marks. marks coach. If Goff is not on, Goff is not S Bob. Is that good for him or is it problematic for him? Is I he S Bob? Is he S Bob? I would think if you were going to talk about the greatness of a team, Detroit's got a pretty a pretty talented team right now. Yeah, maybe. And and golf golf is really. I think you want to be S Bob. You no, you definitely want to be, be S Bob. Kirk Cousins S Bob. I think no. we need to workshop this a little bit. Come back. <laughs> S Bob just keeps growing. Y'all didn't growing. get it. Y'all look. <laughs> let it marinate. Yeah. Next week, that. you guys will be like I, oh, Eureka. That, the that, style that, of that when we put up that style of graphic with some amorphous uh, yeah, pyramid shape. And there, uh, there are a lot of aspects. Nick did it. You're going to end up redoing it on Monday. treated like Nick's <laughs> last draft. It was My the God. same template. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get more from the show and to check out clips from other shows on FS1.